Hi everyone. Okay, so welcome back. We're finally on day five. If it's been a while, I apologize. I've tried to record this same video multiple times. I've uploaded it to YouTube and then the, the audio wasn't playing. So I'm trying to do this again for you guys. I'm trying to stay positive. So I really hope that this series has been helping you. For those of you who are new to the series, we've been going over every single one of the questions from the Accuplacer Advanced Algebra and Functions Practice Test. So the way that we're doing it is we go over the original question and then we're going to go over two brand new questions that practice the same skills as the original question. This way, when you guys go into your Accuplacer exam, you feel like you've really practiced the skills required in order to do well. So let's go ahead and get started with the original question and then we'll see how it progresses into the next two. So it says the graph above shows the cost in dollars of apples as a function of the number of pounds of apples purchased at a particular grocery store. Okay, so that was a lot of wording just to say this graph represents the cost of apples per pound. Okay, then it says the equation above defines the cost C in dollars for P pounds of pears at the same store. So this is just saying that this equation here is representing the cost of pairs. <clears throat> Which of the following statements accurately compares the cost per pound of apples and the cost per pound of pears at the store? Okay, so we just have to use this equation and then use this graph in order to figure out the price of apples and then pears. And then once we're able to find the cost of each, we're gonna compare them to one another. Okay, so let's start with the equation. It says C equals seven over five P. And this entire equation can be used to find the total cost of your pairs. So the C stands for the total amount of money you spend at the store. The P just represents the number of pounds you're buying. So then what does the seven over five represent? Well, because you are multiplying that by the number of pounds you're purchasing to equal the total amount of money spent, the seven over five must represent the price per pair, well, the price of pairs per pound. So how do we take seven over five and make that represent a cost? Well, if you happen to have a calculator with you, go ahead and type in seven divided by five, and let me know what you get. Seven divided by five, and that is equal to 1.4. So in terms of money, it would be 1.40 or $1.40. So the price per pairs of pairs per pound is $1.40. Okay, so we're gonna write that down. And now we're gonna go ahead and go to the cost of apples. So in this situation, we have a graph. So what we need to do is we need to go from a graph, we need to form an equation for that graph, and then use the equation the same way we just used this other equation to figure out the cost of apples per pound. So how do we go about doing that? Well, this is going to be a line here and we need to represent that with an equation. Well, an equation for a line is y is equal to mx plus b. The b represents the y-intercept. All the y-intercept means is where does this line cross over the y-axis? So this is the y-axis. So where does this line cross over on the y-axis? It crosses over the point zero, zero. So the y-intercept is a point zero comma zero. And to put it into the equation, you just use a second number. So y is equal to mx plus zero. Because this is just a zero, you could just write y is equal to mx. You don't have to write plus zero. Now, what does the m represent? Well, the m represents the slope of the line. Slope of the line just means how do you go from one point to the next? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find another point on the line and it's four comma three. So how do you go from zero, zero to four, three? That's the slope. So you go up one, two, three, four. So you go up four, then you go over one, two, three. So the slope of that line is four over three. So instead of writing M, we're gonna write Y is equal to four over three X. Now it looks very similar to that original equation that we used for pairs. 
Y is going to represent the total cost. X is going to represent the number of pounds. So 4 over 3 must represent the number or the price of apples per pound. So do you remember how we find that? 4 over 3 is the same as saying 4 divided by 3. So let's go ahead and put that into our calculators. 4 divided by 3, and you should get 1.33333 repeating. In terms of money, it's $1.33. So the cost of apples is $1.33. So let's now go ahead and compare the price of pears to the price of apples. So the pears were $1.40. The apples were $1.33. So let's go ahead and see the difference. So if we're going to go ahead and subtract them, then we can't do 0 minus 3. So we go ahead and carry from the 4. You make that a 3 and make the 0 a 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. 3 minus 3 is 0. Bring down the decimal point. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the difference is 7 cents. So the pears are 7 cents more than the apples. So let's go ahead and see which one of these answers can show that the apples are less than the pears. So A says apples cost approximately 7 cents less per pound than pears do. That's exactly what we want to say. Apples are 7 cents less. But let's go ahead and make sure that none of the other answers work just to make sure we have the right answer. It says apples cost approximately 4 cents less per pound than pears. No. Apples cost 73 cents less per pound than pears. No. Apples cost approximately 62 cents more per pound than pears do. No. So answer A is correct. Okay. So some of you may be feeling like what we just did is a lot. I agree with you 100%. That's why I created these two additional problems so that you feel more confident using the same skills. So what's going to happen with number two is you're going to feel a little bit more familiar with what we just did. It's not going to be brand new to you. But by the time we get to question number three, you're going to feel way more confident doing this type of problem. So I encourage you to stick into this video and just see it all the way through and then tell me how you feel at the end of it. Okay, so example number two. The graph above shows the cost in dollars of flowers as a function of the number of pounds of flowers purchased at a local shop. So all that's saying is the graph represents the cost of flowers. The equation above defines the cost in dollars for P pounds of chocolates at the same shop. So this equation represents the price of chocolate. Which of the following statements accurately compares the cost per pound of flowers and the cost per pound of chocolates at the shop? So again, we have to figure out how much do chocolates cost per pound, how much flowers cost per pound. Again, we're going to start with the equation for chocolates. C is equal to 14 over 5P. So if C represents the total cost that you spend at the store and P represents the number of pounds you're purchasing, and you're multiplying it by 14 over 5, 14 over 5 must represent the cost of pairs per pound. So how do we figure out what 14 over 5 is in dollars? Well, you do 14 divided by 5. So in your calculator, do 14 divided by 5, and you should end up with 2.8. Okay, but again, we're talking about money, so it should be $2.80. So the price of chocolates should be two dollars and eighty cents well done now we have to use the graph to figure out how much fr fresh flowers cost per pound a little bit of a tongue twister wasn't that one anyways so do you remember what we have to do we go from the graph to an equation and then use the equation to find the price so the equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus b so let's go ahead and use that y is equal to mx plus b. b represents the y-intercept, m represents the slope. I'm going to go ahead and raise this so it doesn't distract us. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at our graph, and we're going to see where does the line cross over the y-axis. So this is the y-axis here. So again, it crosses over at 0, 0. So the y-intercept is 0. So we're going to write y is equal to mx plus 0. Again, you don't technically need to write plus 0, so you can just write y is equal to mx. 
Now we have to figure out what m is, which is a slope. So how do we figure out slope? You go from one point to the next. So here's another point on the line, 4, 1. How do I get from 0, 0 to 4, 1? You go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you go over 1. So 4 over 1 is the slope. So y is equal to 4 over 1x. So if y represents the total cost and x represents the number of pounds, what does this 4 over 1 represent? That represents the cost of flowers per pound. So how do we figure out how much that is in money? 4 over 1 is the same as saying 4 divided by 1. And 4 divided by 1 is just 4. So flowers cost $4 per pound. So we're going to go ahead and put $4 per pound for flowers. So now we have $4 for flowers and $2.80 for chocolate. Let's go ahead and see the difference. So 4 minus 280. You can go ahead and use your calculator. 4 minus, going, 4 minus 2.8 and you get 1.2. Again, you're talking about money. So 1.20 or $1.20. So there's a $1.20 difference. So flowers cost $1.20 more than chocolates. So let's go ahead and read our answer choices and see which one we're going to choose. A, flowers cost approximately $1.20 less per pound than chocolates. No, flowers cost approximately $1.20 more per pound than chocolates. Yes. All right, how do you guys feel? You feel more prepared than you were in the last question, don't you? Well, stick around, do this next question with us together and see how much more smooth it is now that we know what we're doing. Show that you have confidence in yourself and the skills that you're just, you're learning. You'll be able to go ahead in your test and get this answer right if you have a question like this on your test. So question number three says, the graph above shows the cost in dollars of veggies as a function of the number of pounds of veggies purchased at the store. So this graph represents the cost of veggies, okay? The equation above divides the cost in dollars per pound for fruit at the same shop. So this equation is for fruit. Which of the following statements accurately compares the cost per pound of veggies and the cost per pound of fruit at the shop? Okay, so again, we have a graph being compared to an equation. So let's go ahead and start with the equation for fruit. C is equal to 3 fourths P. You probably already know what to do, which is just take the three over four and figure out what the price is. But just as a reminder, C stands for the total cost. P stands for the number of pounds. So three over four must represent the cost. Three over four is the same as what, right? Three divided by four, good. And three divided by four, if you put it into your calculator, is 0.75. In terms of money, that's just 75 cents. So fruit costs 75 cents a pound. Okay, so now we're going to figure out how much veggies cost per pound. Do you remember how to do that? Yep, you're probably writing in your mind graph, equation, and then cost of veggies. So let's go ahead and let's write an equation. Y is equal to mx plus b. b is the y-intercept. So again, this line goes through 0, 0 on the y-axis. So our y-intercept is 0 y is equal to mx plus 0. Or we could just shorten it, y is equal to mx. We don't have to write plus 0. m is the slope. So what is the slope? We have to figure out how to go from one point to a next point. So the next point over is 2 comma 1. So how do you go from 0, 0 to 2, 1? Well, you go up 1 and you go over 2. So 1 over 2 is the slope y is equal to 1 over 2x. Again, y is the total cost, x is the number of pounds, so 1 over 2 must be the cost of veggies. 1 over 2 is the same as saying 1 divided by 2. If you enter in that into your calculator, you get 0.5. In terms of money, that is 50 cents. So fruit costs 75 cents, and the veggies cost 50 cents, so what's the difference? 75 minus 50 equals 25 cents difference. Fruit is 25 cents more than the veggies. So let's go ahead and read our answer choices and see which one we're going to choose. 
Veggies cost approximately 25 cents less per pound than fruit. Veggies cost approximately 25 cents more per pound than fruit. So remember, veggies are 50 cents. So veggies are 25 cents less than fruit. So our answer is going to be A. So I hope by having these three problems all together has helped you build your confidence in using these skills. I'm hoping you guys are benefiting by each day we're practicing together and you're not only just going over one question and then moving on to the next, but you're really practicing your skills over and over again. So if you like what we did today, please follow because we're going to do a new problem every single day. We're going to try to I'm going to try to continue to upload as much as possible so that you guys can feel prepared for your algebra and functions part of your test. But if you're also practicing for the QAS portion and you like this setup, I've also created a practice test. I will link it in the description box. Again, it gives this practice test that I created gives you multiple opportunities to practice the same skills over and over again so that you can feel more prepared for your test. So if you'd like to purchase that practice test, which is for the QAS portion, then you can see the link in the description box. So guys, I really, really hope that today will be the day that I upload this video and my voice will be attached to it. Please, please, please. If you see this video up and you can hear it, just know that I've recorded this a thousand times for you guys. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.